Now, if you're not online, you may not have seen this yesterday, but it was all over X and it's too disturbing to show. I'm sorry, we, we are not gonna show you this video. It's on X, it, but it's just too disturbing to look at. But this 25 year old man set himself on fire outside of the Israeli embassy on Sunday. He, um, again, it's a relatively young man. He was uh, in the US Air Force. He had joined in May of 2020. His service, I understand, not yet complete. And he doused himself with a liquid, some sort of accelerant, we believe, and set himself on fire. He had posted a video online saying he did not want to be, quote, complicit in genocide. And he shouted, free Palestine, as he burned. Um, per a friend of the uh, to the Washington Post, he was scheduled to leave the military this May. Now, just a bit of background in him, MK, for the audience. He was part of something called the Community of Jesus, raised at a religious compound in Orleans, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. Uh, he eventually left the group, but the group's school is alleged to have created an environment of control, intimidation, and humiliation. This is via Washington Post that fostered and inflicted enduring harms on its students. So clearly there's some troubling things in this guy's background. You won't be surprised to learn. Um, a former group member talked about members losing a sense of belonging once they left the group. That makes it sound like a cult, right? If you, once, you, once you're out, if you no longer feel the sense of belonging, it could to potentially be. And his friends talking to the Washington Post talked about how two weeks before the incident, um, they had talked about their identities as anarchists and what kinds of risks and sacrifices were needed to be effective. That he, Bushnell, texted a friend on Sunday, I hope you'll understand, I love you. This doesn't even make sense, but I feel like I'm going to miss you. Sent a friend a copy of his will on Sunday. In it, he gave his cat to a neighbor and a fridge full of root beers to a friend. And then another friend, Lupe Barboza, told the Washington Post that this man, Bushnell, was outraged about what's happening in uh, between Israel and Palestine, in particular in Gaza. He knew no one who was in charge was listening to the protesters out there every week. He knows that he has privilege as a white man and a member of the military. And in response to seeing this guy set himself on fire, you literally have two of the presidential contenders, Cornell West, and Green Party politician Jill Stein celebrating what he did. The Cornell West post on X takes the cake. Let us never forget the extraordinary courage and commitment of brother Aaron Bushnell, who died for truth and justice, exclamation point. I pray for his precious loved ones, exclamation point. Let us rededicate ourselves to genuine solidarity with Palestinians undergoing genocidal attacks in real time. And from Jill Stein, rest in power, Aaron Bushnell. I quote, I will no longer be complicit in genocide, free Palestine. Quoting his dying words, may his sacrifice deepen our commitment to stop genocide now. My God. I mean, the story, the initial story is deeply disturbing and sad and his death is useless. So and then to see the reaction to it, and probably even more disturbing possibly than the initial thing. Like the idea that we have a society where major figures who would be considered, I believe they call them thought leaders, uh, are valorizing self-immolation is just insane to me. There are moments when you look around at your fellow Americans and you don't want to have that moment, but you look around and you go, are we living in the same world? Are us, are the two of us, are we living in the same world? Because any society that starts glorifying self-immolation is on a very, very bad path. And it's a very short path, by the way. And one of the few things that you can take from this, that's like a silver lining. It's a very short path to someone who would hurt a bunch of other people in the name of a political cause. He happened to only hurt himself, which is sad enough, but this is frightening. This reaction actually made me disturbed in sort of a physical way. I had to put down mm -hmm. my phone and walk away from this conversation because I was like, "What? what is happening here? What's happening? Yeah. How, how do you look at this? Again, we're not gonna show it, but this deeply disturbing video, and I will just say he does not die immediately. and. It's very, very bizarre to see this man on fire walking around, seemingly shouting. And 
to look at that and have any reaction other than this is horrifying. This is obviously a deeply disturbed man. And, yeah. you know, lo care and love to those who have survived him, who cared about this man, but we need to do more about mental health. That's, that's the normal person's reaction. Here's Wajahat Ali, who was one of the guys in that infamous Don Lemon video, he used to be at CNN, you remember this, MK, um, who is sneering at the Trump supporters, you Trump supporters, you with your maps and your math. Remember that clip with Don Lemon, yeah. this guy, and um, the, the Lincoln Project guy. So here he decides to weigh in. Um, Rick Wilson was the third. There was a poster on X saying, I strongly oppose valorizing any form of suicide as a noble, principled, or legitimate form of political protest. Wajahat Ali responds, there is no evidence Aaron Bushnell was suffering from mental illness. Other than the fact that he set himself on fire and took his own life at 25, as you point out in an act that will do absolutely nothing to change the national conversation around Palestine. He was very clear about his reasoning for self-immolation, the most extreme form of protest against what he believes is an ongoing genocide against Palestinians by Israel. His last words were free Palestine. This is not the right horse to die on, Wajahat Ali. That no. they're, they really do see this guy as noble and totally sane and competent in you know body and mind and made this just, just a choice. It's like on the menu of things you can do, like get your picket sign, uh, and yeah. set yourself on fire and die at 25. This, you know, it's right there. There it is. Yeah, I mean, he he sees it as courage, right? Yes, it's like all real, of them do. Real ad adherence to your values in the face of real odds. That That's what he sees this as. And that's scary, frankly. And, and, and um, they're not going to do it. You know, not that I want them to, but I'm saying they're not going right. to do it. They don't think it's so wonderful they're going to do it. You know, they're going to use these terms loosely and irresponsibly. Yeah. And then some other young disturbed person is going to do it because you're going to be like, oh, presidential candidates are praising it. Were we told on the right that you need to be very careful about things like that, right? Because you could set off the next school shooter. You have to be much yeah. more responsible in your rhetoric, Cornell. No, again, the, re the rhetoric uh, rules are always one-sided, Megan. Okay, so if we do it bad, if they do it, it's for the right reasons. But I do think like there's actual studies that media coverage of suicide can create more suicides. Like yes, it, you actually That's why they no longer say it. MK, that's why they you're no longer supposed to say what the method of suicide was. Right. Like after um Kate Spade took her own life, yes. she died by suicide. There was that there was Anthony Bourdain, there was like a cup there was a, a, a right. spike and the the word went out. I was at NBC at the time. Like we're no longer saying how they did it because it puts right. it in the mind of vulnerable people. Now this, I mean, it's all that's out the window too. All these same people want to be extra cautious when it's a civilian. Don't care at all. Why? Because he's yeah. white and he's a marine, or he's a he's an Air Force guy. I don't, German. or just given the cause and the fact that they they're celebrating the fact that he thought his whiteness and status as a member of the military was something to be ashamed of and why, you know, he needed to do something extraordinary. We've lost our There's minds. A, no, it's crazy. There's a real left eats its own moment here where people were talking about the phrase rest in power and uh, white liberals were pointing out, you should not use the term rest in power for this individual, not because he self-immolated on beh behalf of a political cause and that's bad, uh, but because that is a phrase reserved for the black community and therefore right. to do that would be appropriating that and it's disrespectful. Like in the mind of some left-leaning tweeters, uh, a person can literally light themselves on fire for your cause and it he's still just a white guy, right? Like it's, it mm -hmm. is, the, the insanity is sort of magnificent and, and, and it makes me, like I said, like viscerally disturbed to, yes, to see this fight play out. It, like I, I want to laugh right. so that I might not cry, but I can't. Here's the, um, hold on a second. Here's the best the best piece of it. And, and by that, I just mean like the most stunning and horrifying. Um, a Palestinian writer described himself as a writer and a poet, Muhammad El Kurd, has nearly 400,000 followers on X. He's lamenting from the sound of this, the following. You can't protest peacefully. You can't boycott. You can't hunger strike. You can't hijack planes. 
You can't block traffic. Yes, you caught me in there. In between hunger strike and block traffic, he's lamenting. You can't hijack planes. You can't throw Molotovs. You can't self-immolate. You can't heckle politicians. Yes, in between Molotovs and heckling politicians, he has self-immolate. You can't march. You can't riot. You can't dissent. You just can't be. His tweet has 3 million views. And then a Twitter poster, an X poster called Rose Dark retweeted El Kurd and wrote, quote, reminder that plane hijackings used to be perfectly normal and were mostly nonviolent. 9-11 was an outlier and the first of its kind. That's Rose Dark trying to rehabilitate the reaction of this, this poster, you know, uh, Mohammed El Kurd, after people like, you know, you and me said, you can't hijack planes? You're, you're equating yeah. that with it. And so Rose Dark says, plane hijackings used to be perfectly normal. They were mostly nonviolent. 9-11 was an outlier and the mm-hmm. first of its kind. And I must, must spend a minute on what Charles, Charles C.W. Cook of National Review responded. He responded as follows. Yet another thing 9-11 took from us. The joy of those perfectly normal. <laughs> it's, it's gallows humor, but we must. The joy of oh, those perfectly you, normal. C.W. Cook for that. Yeah. <laughs> Nonviolent plane hijackings we all enjoyed. I remember it well. Do you have a layover? My parents would ask. That depends, I'd answer impishly. And then we'd all laugh and shout, fingers crossed. <laughs> Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Oh, joy. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Mm -mm. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe 10 grand or 10 million, they can help you, whether it's business or personal taxes. Even if you have the means to pay or you are on a fixed income, they can help financially resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation or visit tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.